Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns. I teach knitting workshops online and in person and I sell pretty yarns. You can find all the information on my website at yarnaddicto.co.uk and I also pop all the links below this video. I have a couple of yarn shows coming up. I'm currently getting ready for Yarn Dale 2022. It's on 24th and 25th of September. Um, I'm recording this in September 2022 so if you're watching this in later years um i'll put a link to the website below so do go on the website and find out when next year's show is also i will link the page on my website where i put all my workshops and events i'm attending so if you're interested in finding out which show i'm going to be at next just check that uh, page and i'll link to that below i also have a local show coming up uh a week after yarndale on the 1st of october 2022 which is uh, the Three Bags Full Wool Market in Liscott, Cornwall. That's just a small, smaller local show, although it's getting bigger every year. So um, with all, all, all this preparation for shows, I was thinking maybe I should do a video with my top tips for attending shows. So I thought I would do a video with my top tips for attending uh, shows. So if you're about to go to a yarn show or you might want to bookmark this and keep it for the future, if you have any uh, tips that I haven't shared, then please leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing and please leave me a comment. And welcome to this video, whether you are a returning viewer or a new viewer, I really appreciate you being here. I'm wearing a new Mobius cowl. It's a brioche Mobius cowl. Um, I've just sent the pattern to my tech editor this morning and I may have it ready for yarn Dale. Uh, I'm filming this um about a week before we leave for Yarndale. so i may have it for Yarndale. i don't know uh at the moment i don't have a name for this pattern and it's not out yet but when i'm filming this but it might be out by the time this video goes live so if it is like if the pattern is available when this video goes live i will add the link below if not sign up to my newsletter and the link to that will be in in the description box below if you sign up to my newsletter you'll always be the first to know when i release new patterns do make sure if you're not signed up to my newsletter that you do that after watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for joining me. So most of the shows that I attend, I attend as a storeholder and a teacher. Uh, but I have attended quite a few shows over the years as a visitor. Most recently I attended a show in Norway a couple of weeks ago with my mum. I thought it would be a fairly small show. And it was a small show in terms of storeholders. But it wasn't a small show in terms of visitors. And I made one of the mistakes that I um, warn against in this video. So do watch to see what mistake I made uh, when I attended this yarn show in Oslo a few weeks ago. So I have, I think I've got have 10 or 11 tips for you. Uh, things that I've learned over the years. Um, one of the main things is to prepare. So make sure you look at the list of exhibitors before you go. Most yarn shows will have a website where they link all their um, exhibitors. So you can see a list of everyone who's going to be there. You can usually link to their website. You might be able to read a little bit about them. So you can see if any of your favourites are going to be there or if any new exhibitors that you haven't heard of are going to be there, but you might be interested. Shows vary in size. There are some really, really huge ones and there are some really, really small ones. So if you go into one of the really big ones like Yarndale or um, like the one at Alexandra Palace in London, I think it's called Knitting and Stitching Show, um, you really want to plan ahead because it's going to be difficult to get around all the stalls if you're just there for a day because there are so many. So do plan ahead. Make a note of anything that you want to make sure you don't miss. Uh, when you get to the show, you will normally get a, a program booklet, which has a list of all the exhibitors. It may also have maps of where all the stalls are located and other information. And I see a lot of people as they walk around the show make notes in that program and mark off which stalls they might want to buy from in the future or they might want to come back to. I also see a lot of people leave their programs um on a stall as they walk around because they stop to look at something or maybe even buy something they put their program down and they wander off i have picked up a lot of left programs over the years so if you're making notes in a program do make sure you hang on to it and don't lose it if you're looking for yarn specifically have a look at your pattern queue and see whether there's any particular patterns that you want to knit soon and that you might need yarn for 
check pattern details such as yarn requirements, um, tension, needle size, any notions that you may need. Um, and if it's a yarn that you can't get very easily where you live, then maybe look at um, substitutes. And the best way to do this is to look at the yarn details and see what uh, thickness the yarn is. And also how many meters per 50 or 100 grams and how much yarn you need in total. So that'll make it easier to find substitutes if you need to. So once you've gone through your list, only patterns that you might want to make it in the near future or that you might want to buy yarn for, then keep a list of that. I did keep it electronically on your phone. Bear in mind that many shows don't have very good 4G reception or may not have uh, Wi-Fi. Quite often shows will reserve their Wi-Fi for storeholders who need it to take uh, electronic payments. So there may not be public Wi-Fi available. And a lot of the shows, especially in the UK, are in quite rural areas. So 4G coverage might not be very good. So if you're keeping stuff electronically on your phone in like a notes app, that would be fine. But if you want to refer to websites such as Ravelry, then you may have a problem. So if you can keep it offline on your phone, like in a notes app, that's fine. Uh, but if you rely on access to somewhere like a Ravelry, then you may struggle. Uh, you can also take a notebook and just keep notes in an old-fashioned notebook. Um, just make sure you don't lose it. Look through your stash and see if there's anything that you need or particularly yarns that you have a lot of or you don't have enough of. So I know that in my stash I have an awful lot of sock yarns, luxury hand-dyed sock yarns, um, which is probably of my favourite yarns to knit with. But I have a lot of them. I have a lot of single skeins. If I was going to buy sock yarns at a show, I might want to look at what I have and see what colour themes I have going on. I have a lot of purple. I have a lot of pink. But I do have some other colours as well. And I might pick out one or two yarns, uh, which um, you may think, I want to use this yarn soon, but I don't want to do a single skein project. I don't want to do socks in those sock yarn. I might want to do a shawl or accessories. Can I find another yarn to go with this so I can use it for a two colour shawl? Things like that. Um, or you might decide that you have a lot of four ply or DK yarns, but at the moment you're really into knitting really delicate lace shawls in two ply yarn. So then you might want to look for two ply or you have loads of yarns in one colour and you might want to branch out to other colours as well. So do look at what you already have. Also think about if there's other things you need like knitting needles, uh, accessories, notions, do you need new project bags? Because you might want to go to a yarn show and think, I don't really want to buy yarn because I have so much yarn. But I do fancy treating myself. And if that's the case, then looking at project bags and knitting notions might be a good idea. So if there are specific things that you want to get, do make a list so you don't forget. Um, and it might help you focus your spending on what you actually want and need rather than just buying the first thing that you see. A lot of people take money in cash. I've noticed even these days when most of us pay by debit card or credit card. Um, I noticed at the last show I did earlier in the summer, I was taking a lot more cash than I was expecting because I was thinking with the pandemic, we've got used to using cards a lot more and doing contactless payments and stuff. And a lot of people brought cash. I think that might be because it is easy to stick to a budget if you bring cash. I know a lot of people put cash aside over the years. So they might know that they're going to a big yarn show in a few months time. So they'll put away a few pounds every month or every week or every time they draw cash out or whatever. Um, and then take that in cash. And it is easier to see how much you've spent when you spend cash. Because if you have it in a purse and suddenly there's no money in there, then you know you've spent your budget. Um, obviously, depending on what your financial circumstances are, I find a lot of people... The last show I did were paying cash and then there were there were more card sales towards the end of the day than there was the beginning of the day. And that's probably because people have spent what they brought with them in cash and then they were like, oh, but I fancy this. So it can be hard to stick to a budget at yarn shows. It's loads of very, very tempting stuff. So if you know that you're going to get too tempted and you may buy more than you want or can afford, then taking cash and sticking to that might be a good idea. I don't think I've ever come across a, an exhibitor at the show that hasn't taken cash. Um, but who knows? <laughs> With the pandemic and everything, maybe there are people who choose not to take cash. But I've never come across anyone who won't take cash. When you get to the show, a lot of people will do one round of the shows. They'll do like a sort of uh, recce to see what's there. 
it depends on the show some shows are quite big and especially if you might have problems with uh, moving around and um, if walking causes you pain for example then doing a round and then doing a second round to buy might be difficult um Yarndale, for example is a really big show and the first year that it was held this is the 10th year by the way of Yarndell and I've been there since the beginning the first year I don't think the organizers were really prepared for how busy and popular it was going to be and they had loads of people queuing up at the start of day one I think they had to open the door like a few minutes early because there were so many people queuing and it was so packed it was absolutely completely and utterly packed and Yarndell it's fairly spacious the aisles are not massive but they're quite spacious there's plenty of space there normally it was just so packed and we were just four people in our stall right through till probably like four o'clock in the afternoon or something um i've never seen so many people in one go at a show um which is great as a stall holder but not so pleasant as a visitor so if you happen to go to a show like that then it might be really difficult to do a second round unless you can take a break and come back later in the day wear comfy shoes and clothes um you will probably do a lot of walking um so wearing comfy shoes is important some yarn shows are in agricultural um, buildings like yarndale is in a cattle market Woolfest, which used to be in cumbria i think i've heard that it stopped but i'm not 100 sure but they were in a cattle market wonderwall in wales is in um a agricultural show ground so that's in it's not in a cattle market but it's a building that's normally used for agricultural um displays so it is in a fairly basic barn with concrete floor i think if i remember correctly so do wear comfortable shoes so you can walk around in for the duration of the day i normally tend to wear trainers in the summer and um, my kind of comfy boots in the winter personally i would avoid heels or anything to, that might be slippery uh, some shows have quite an even ground like yarndell it's in a cattle market the ground is not even i don't even think the building is like completely flat i think it's sloped slightly um and there are like ridges in the floor and there are like dips into each stall so at yarndell each stall is basically in a cattle or sheep pen so going into each stall there is a bit of a ridge um i guess that's to allow things water other liquids fluids to run off um so do be prepared for that and check out the venue whereas unravel in farnham in surrey is in a very nice old building there are a lot of stairs but it, the rooms are nice and they're warm so do check out the building is it going to be warm is it going to be cold i've done wonderful in wales quite a few times and there's been a couple of times when it's been really warm um like almost summer like temperatures and there's been a few times when it's been really wet and really really cold i remember one year when people were so cold I think I could have sold most of my samples. People were coming around saying, do you sell finished knitted socks? Do you sell knitted hand warmers and gloves? People and stall holders were just wrapping themselves up in all their samples. It was awful. Um, and it got quiet as the weekend went on because it was so cold. And I think there was some flooding on some of the main roads um, to the area. So that affected the amount of people who were turning up as well. So the second day was a bit miserable, to be quite honest so do make sure you dress for the occasions uh, like Yarndale is at the end of September it can be quite warm in Yorkshire at that time of year it can be quite chilly it might be chilly in the morning and they get warmer during the day so do wear layers and also bear in mind that if you have to queue to get into the show you probably will have to queue outside um, so if it's raining you might want to bring something that's going to keep you reasonably dry so you don't start a day completely soaked if you need to sit down regularly or have limited mobility do check what facilities are in advance um, because they can vary a lot are there um is access going to be a problem for example unravel in uh, farnham in surrey is in a very old building and there are a lot of stairs and small rooms that have steps one or two steps up and down i know there is a lift up to by the main entrance up to the second floor I don't know how easily accessible all the rooms are because there are lots of different levels. So do check out um, the show you're going to. If the website doesn't tell you what the accessibility is going to be like, then email the organisers and ask them. Um, 
Yandel, for example, is in a cattle market, so the ground is a bit uneven. Um, so that might cause problems if you use a wheelchair or if you are um, using any kind of other mobility aids. Having said that, at all the shows I do, I have seen loads of people using various mobility aids from um, like the walking frames, walking sticks, um, wheelchairs, scooters. There's a lot of different mobility aids and most people seem to be able to get around. Um, if you're tr struggling to access a stall, then do ask the stall holder. Sometimes if it's busy, the stall holder may not see you and realise that you're waiting to come in and you might not be able to come in because the stall is so crowded. You may not feel like you can get in with your um, mobility aid, uh, especially if it's a bigger mobility aid. So do ask the stall holder. Everyone wants to be considerable, but it's crowded. It's difficult. Um, so just ask i know that can be difficult i try and keep an eye out for people who may want to access my store but struggling so i do try and ask but also bear in mind that if you need physical help to access a store some store holders have health problems themselves i have quite severe upper back neck and shoulder problems so if somebody needed help to actually get their wheelchair into my store i might not be able to do that because i struggle with a lot of pain when i do shows um and lifting or pushing something that might be heavy it might be something that I would struggle with and not be keen to do um, because I would worry about the amount of pain I'd be in by the end of the show uh, because I am in considerable amount of pain by the end of the show so do be considerate and ask for help if you need it and also on a similar note if you do have mobility problems and struggle to reach things or even if you don't have mobility problems but you're struggling to reach things um, do ask for stall holders. Um, I try not to put things too high, but I know that some things will be out of reach if you're in a wheelchair because I only have so much space and I have to fit everything in. So it's very difficult to have everything at a reachable level. We also have to be careful with children that certain things aren't within reach of children. Um, so it's difficult, but you know, I'm always happy to pass things to people. If people say, I want to look at that yarn up there, but I can't reach it then just ask me and I will get it for you and let you look at it. Um, I do try and be as helpful as I can, so do ask. So let's talk about when the show is most busy. So most shows are busier on day one and most shows are busier earlier in the day. So if it's a two day show, then in my experience, and I think there's only been once when this has not been the case, most of the time day one will be busier than day two. That's the case even if day one is on a weekday and day two is on a weekend. So, for example, when I used to do Woolfest in Cumbria, day one was on a Friday, day two was on a Saturday. Every single year that I did it, day one was busier. There was only one year that day two was busier. Obviously, weather and things might have something to do with that, especially for a show in rural areas, because if the weather is particularly bad and there's flooding, that might cause access issues for some people. Um, at Unravel, the February show is a three-day show, or used to be a three-day show. I haven't done it for, I think, about three years. Um, I haven't. Last time I did it was 2019, I think, so it may have changed since then. But the February show used to always be a three-day show. It used to be, originally, I think it was Friday afternoon, evening, and then it kind of got a bit longer, so it was nearly as long as the other two days. It just it didn't start till after lunch on the Friday. Um, and then it was all day Saturday and all day Sunday. And Friday, I think Saturday was the busiest day of that show. Um, but usually the last day of any show is the quietest. And the end of the day is usually the quietest. And this is the mistake I did when I went to this show in Oslo in Norway recently. We wanted to get there for when the show opened. But we did something else first when we got to Oslo. Um, and so we got there probably about an hour after they opened. And there was quite a bit. Of a queue there'd been a longer queue i think when they opened and i think there's a longer queue again later they were letting people in in smaller groups to try and help to flow through the building it was a very nice building but it was quite small and old it was an older building and it had loads of different rooms and levels and there was a few exhibitors in each room and there wasn't a lot of space and there were quite a few stalls that we couldn't get to because we just couldn't get close enough so we couldn't see it um so we didn't stay that long we did buy something. We, I saw the stalls I was most desperate to see, but there were stalls there that were new to me that I didn't get a chance to look at properly. I was just kind of like peering over other people's shoulders because I'm quite tall. 
I'll stay with my mum as she's quite short and um, we both have uh, chronic pain problems which is why I was keen to go earlier in the day because I know that chronic pain gets worse in the afternoon or at least that's the case for me. The organiser did point out that it was much much quieter in the afternoon so I wish we'd gone in the afternoon because I think we'd had a much more ex better experience. I think if I'd gone on my own um, I would have sat down, got a drink, got something to eat, knitted for an hour or so and then had another go but we had a look around, we both managed to buy something but we didn't get to look at all the stalls. We kind of peeked at all the stalls, some of them there were like three or four people in front of us and we just couldn't get access. Um, so that was a shame but my advice would be if you're worried about crowds come back in the afternoon or if you're at a show and it gets really busy and you're feeling a bit uncomfortable um, because it's so crowded try and see if you can find someone to take a break, have your lunch, knit for a bit, chat with a few people and then have a look around the afternoon because the afternoons tend to be a lot quieter. Uh, seating may be in short supply for a lot of shows. I think a lot of shows the organisers try and provide seating but there never seems to be enough. Um, also food venues may have uh, quite long queues even shows that have quite a lot of food opportunities seem to have quite long queues so if you need to eat at certain times you may want to bring your own uh, food and if you can't queue you might want to bring your own food so bringing some snack at least or some food for lunch and some drink might not be a bad idea obviously when you're buying food out it tends to be more expensive like bottles of water tends to be more expensive so bringing a bottle of water would be a good idea um i think it's nicer to get lunch there if you can but obviously some stalls some shows are just the queues are just too long as stall holders we usually buy lunch on the way in in the morning we'll stop at a petrol station or a small shop and buy some sandwiches and some drinks uh we don't tend to eat at lunchtime unless it's really quiet usually it's middle of the afternoon by the time we get a chance to eat because we're trying to avoid eating when it's busiest so it tends to be middle of the afternoon by the time you get a chance to eat unless it's quieter so do bear in mind um, being able to sit down, especially if you have um, pain problems or um, mobility issues or any reasons that you need to sit. I do remember going to Ali Pali in London, Alexandra Palace, I think that's the knitting and stitching show, the autumn one, um, and I do have to sit down every so often because I do get a lot of pain in my back and now I have knee problems as well and I remember really struggling to find somewhere to sit. And I think I ended up just asking somebody who had a spare chair at their table if I could sit there. Um, so that's worth doing because quite often people will sit at a table, there might be two and four chairs, so see if you can join somebody if that's uh, the only option. Okay, and from a storeholder's point of view, we do really love to talk to you. It's great to do shows to be able to chat to knitters, meet old friends, meet new friends, meet online friends, meet customers, chat to new people, chat to people we see at every show. There's a lot of people that we like to chat to. Um, but the main reason that we are there is to sell. If you do a show and you don't make any money, you're not gonna do that show again because we are running a business after all and at least from where I live in the UK, I live in the south, far southwest of England and every single show I do is a long drive away. Um, it's usually at least four hours drive, quite often longer than that. So I do have to make a profit because I have to pay for two or three, four nights in a hotel depending on the show and where it is and how many days it is. Yeah. I'd pay for food, petrol, so we do have to make a profit. So the main reason we are there is to sell. So even though it's lovely to chat to people, um, be a bit careful about chatting to storeholders when you can see there are customers around who may want to pay. At the end of the day when it's quiet or if you can walk into a store and it's empty, yeah have a chat but if you see other people coming in or people hovering around to pay then do excuse yourself. Um, it's difficult sometimes to kind of say to people excuse me I need to serve this lady but I have had to do it at times but some people are just really really seem completely oblivious to the fact that they just want to have a chat but other people might be wanting to speak to me because they want to ask me a question about something they want to buy or they want to pay for something um and it's difficult because i don't like being rude to people but i have had to sometimes just excuse myself so be aware of your surroundings and the storeholders are there to prim primarily sell especially and don't do what happened to me once i had a lady who i'd never met before come up to me 
it, it was quiet. It was towards the end of the day and it was quiet, but she started asking me questions about how I got started designing and she was being very vague about what she was asking. So I wasn't sure really what she wanted, but it was like she was trying to get information out of me without just saying, right, tell me how you got started. Um, and it was a bit awkward and because there wasn't anyone else there because it was right at the end of the day I was struggling to kind of get away because there wasn't it wasn't there wasn't any other customers there so I couldn't say sorry I need to serve this person um so it's a bit awkward so do bear that in mind that store holders are there because they run a business and if you have specific questions about patterns or certain things you might be easier just to email them and they'll have more time to answer you properly as well on the same note some stalls are very small and get crowded very easily sometimes as stallholders we can't uh, control what size stall we have sometimes it depends on the cost um some places are quite expensive some are cheaper um i had a few years at wool fest i think it was where i wanted a double stall but i was only allocated a single stall so i made it a lot more crowded and cramped and i was aware of that when he was busy so it's not always the but i i asked for a double stall but i wasn't given it um i could, was only given a single stall i guess that was because they were trying to fit more people in so do be aware of that and if it is very crowded and a lot of people and you just want to browse or chat then and you know you're not going to buy anything then maybe go away and come back later when it's quieter having said that you know if sometimes you want to browse and you might not think you want to buy anything but then you get tempted and you end up buying something anyway or you see something that you want that you didn't realize was for sale so you buy it anyway um but if you know you're just there to chat or um browse then maybe come back when it's quieter the last hour of the day at any show I've ever done has always been extremely, extremely quiet. Like usually completely dead, to be quite honest. Even at that first Yarndale, which was so busy on the first day, the last hour was really, really quiet. Um, that year, by the way, the second day was much quieter than the first day. So if you are worried about the crowds, you know, consider going later in the day or going on the second day if it's a two-day show. Um, that might help if you're not sure when the quieter times so are ask some store holders that you know have done that show before or people you know who've been before they can maybe tell you when's busiest and when's quietest know when the show closes um some shows they will walk around and announce the show is now closed or the show's closing in 10 minutes and uh, you need to finish buying and head to the exit then they'll walk around again when the show closes and tell you to leave some shows they don't it does kind of you just notice that store holders start packing up around you. Uh, some shows they won't allow you to pack up until a certain time. But some shows have quite strict rules about when you can pack up and where you can do when, uh, because it can take visitors a while to leave the venue. So even if the show closes at five, there may still be visitors in the venue at quarter past five because they're busy chatting and they haven't realized that the show's closed or they're busy buying something and they're just finishing up their purchasing and leaving. Then quite often as they're leaving the venue, they can see things and they get distracted and they hang around for longer. So do keep an eye on when the show's closing. And if you know that it's going close to five o'clock, um, do finish up what you want to buy and start uh, to leave. Store holders are usually quite keen to leave the show as soon as it closes because it, the days are quite long for us. Um, we've usually been there since before the show opens. Sometimes we have to set up in the morning before the first show. Um, and on the second or the last day of the show, we're usually keen to pack up because we have to get home and pack, we have to pack everything up, get into our vehicles and get home. And some people have a long drive home. And we're usually exhausted by the end of the show. So do be sensitive to the fact that storeholders and organizers really want to get away as soon as possible after a show finishes whether it's um, just to get away to get something to eat on the first day or at the end of the last day they need to pack up and get the venue back to normal um, and some venues do have like a limit on when they want storeholders out by um, because they have to set up for an event the next day for example and things like that so do check closing time and do be sensitive to the fact that storeholders and organizers really need you to leave when the show closes um, it's difficult to start packing up and it's also unsafe to start packing up if there are lots of visitors around um, so if you notice that people are starting to pack up around you check the time and then leave <laughs> okay 
so those are that's the advice I have to give uh do you agree with all of that do you have any other tips or advice that you would like to give somebody who is going to a yarn show let me know if you are going to any yarn shows in the near future are you going to Yarndale this weekend are you going to come down to Cornwall next week for the three packs for wool market uh, the next show I'm doing after that is Stitch Fest in um, Newton Abbott in Devon. That's the first weekend of November. I'm not having a stall there because I'm actually teaching uh, somewhere else that week as well. But I am teaching on the Sunday. So I will be around on the Sunday. I'm teaching two workshops. I have an hour between the two workshops where I have to eat lunch, pop to the loo, <laughs> get ready for the next workshop. But I'm also hoping I might have a very quick look around some of the stalls, but we'll see. I may not have time um so if you're going to go to uh stitch fest in november you may see me around you may not so thank you for watching i really appreciate your time leave your comments below with any advice or tips you have if you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and i will hopefully see you at a show in the near future and as i said make sure you sign up to my newsletter um below the link is below or you can go to my website yarnaddict.co.uk to sign up to my newsletter uh, and then you'll be notified of all the events i do in the future thank you for watching and i'll see you next time